Hi, my name is Sky Perry and I'm with SSP Innovations. Uh, I wanted to come and talk to you a little bit today about a common architectural question that we get regarding ArcGIS Online and keeping your data, the historically maintained in the back office, secure while enabling it to use all of the new Esri tools. Some of those key tools that we're going to talk about here are things like Collector, ArcGIS for iOS or Android, uh, ArcGIS Explorer, there's a lot of these great applications Esri's developed for us and our goal is to make that data available to it uh, on any device, anywhere, at any time by using the new platform ArcGIS Online, which is abbreviated here as ArcGIS.com. So, one of the common questions we get from all of our customers is how do we use our back office data while keeping it secure to enable these new patterns? So let's dig in a little bit. We'll start off with a common point that all of our customers start with and they typically have in place today, and that's the back office intranet data. So this is your Oracle or your SQL Server geodatabase where you're authoritative Esri data, your feature classes uh, that are Esri feature classes, this could certainly be ArcFM here in the back office, whatever that data is you house today that you want to expose, it's there, it's secure, and we want to keep it that way. So we'll start there, assuming you have that in place. The next component down here on the bottom left is ArcGIS Server. Now many of you may already have ArcGIS Server, and if you do that's great, but sometimes this is a new component. Key point to note is it's still in the back office, completely behind our firewall, which you see drawn here vertically uh, in orange. So our first step is to get this exposed out, to take this data from your Oracle, your SQL Server geodatabase, and get it exposed out into ArcGIS Server. Pretty typical there, uh, you're likely already doing this. Next key component, when we're exposing either map services or feature services from your ArcGIS Server, they come out as REST endpoints. And this is really key, it's a web service that can be consumed by many different applications, many different websites, that part's great. But we want to ensure this is secure. So our next key component is to come in here and actually secure these REST services. And we'll do that with a couple different options. At first, we might consider ArcGIS uh, server authorization. And that basically implies that we're going to keep a local user and password store within ArcGIS server. Many utilities use that. Works just fine. We can alternatively go ahead and use the authentication via your existing Active Directory from Microsoft if you want to use your Windows logons here. Totally optional, can go either way. But either way, we want every service coming out of this ArcGIS server locked down with the username and password one way or another. So that's our first key component. Now our next challenge is to get that data exposed securely out beyond our firewall. So we move over to your DMZ. This is your demilitarized zone. This is a location that's typically less secure than your back office, however, not fully exposed into the internet. And we're going to use this box essentially as a proxy to consume our back office data while providing a buffer between the back office and the actual internet. So we've got some great products here that we can plug in to do just that. First one we'll note is ArcGIS Web Adapter. Part of ArcGIS Server sits right on top of Microsoft IIS and will basically natively consume our data from the back office and expose it out via a web server. So let's talk about that for a moment. We need to broker this data in, and we have to punch through the firewall as we come across here into our internal ArcGIS server. Key point is that we want to lock this down as far as we can, and the only port we're going to open up here is your port 6433. Now I want you to note here, typical web server terminology, 433 is your uh, secure uh, HTTPS, secure sockets layer uh, security. We're using 6433, which is what ArcGIS uses for the same purpose, to punch through the firewall and get here. Point is, is all over HTTPS, it's all fully secured and the data is encrypted between this channel. And by only opening up this exact port between an IP that's a fixed IP in your DMZ and a fixed IP here inside of your back office, we're limiting that traffic down to communicating between these two different servers. So now we've exposed these data points out, and it actually brings out the REST endpoints out into our DMZ. And that's our next sort of stage. So we'll just note here that we now have our REST endpoints available here in the DMZ. All right, so we've got that. That's part of it. 
let's jump over and talk a little bit about ArcGIS.com and our devices. And this is generically representing whatever device and whatever application might consume this data. First key point is we're going to use the named user concept available via ArcGIS.com. And that's where our user store can be located. And different users may have access to different maps via groups. So perhaps a back office user can see everything. Uh, our, our executives might only see executive overview maps. Our field workers see collection-based maps. So that's all managed here via this store. You can alternatively manage this via Active Directory if desired, but there's some additional configuration and additional architecture required to do so. So here we're going to assume you're using ArcGIS Online as your data store for your user authentication and authorization out here in the cloud. So let's talk about that first. As I take my device here, let's call it an iPad. I log into ArcGIS.com and I'm able to get a certain set of data. Key point is web maps. Everything in ArcGIS Online is focused on the web map, which drives the content that I'm able to see within my application. So as I transfer this web map over to this device, first key point that people get confused on is that the data is stored in the cloud. Now note our data has not left our back office. The data is still stored in the back office. We've got it exposed via a REST endpoint into our DMZ via encrypted connections. So how are we going to get that data? The web map includes a reference using the concepts of HTML5 and a JavaScript API, allowing the client to directly consume those REST endpoints. Now what do I mean by that? And this is an important point. The web map comes down, iPad consumes that endpoint, but instead of going back through the cloud to get the data, for view services, our iPad actually comes across directly through the internet into our web adapter to consume those REST endpoints. So we're talking about purely view services. We've got read-only services. We're never going through the cloud to get it. It's device directly to the web adapter, punching through to our service. Data is all housed in the back office. One key point that we want to bring up about this entry point to the IIS is we want to lock that down too. We want to make this only port 433, which of course is HTTPS. We'll have a valid server certificate here, and we're combining it with a username challenge, which we talked about earlier, the security side of our ArcGIS server, with encryption all the way to the device, which gives you a secure channel to expose that data out. This is a very common practice in many other utility applications, so using it and extending it into our ArcGIS Online environment is usually pretty common, so most folks can get behind this. Final step we want to talk about is editing. Now, one of the real interesting pieces is that editing is using the cloud here, ArcGIS.com, as a proxy. To be clear, though, no data is stored in the cloud. It's actually just references a proxy through the cloud. The data is still stored in the back office. This is only for editing, to be clear. So in that case, we actually need to allow the iPad can already see ArcGIS.com. The iPad can already see our internal web adapter here published via a public IP. The only part here is that we also need to ensure that we can see this line here. Between ArcGIS.com, they can also see this, but this is going to be a public URL. Uh, call it uh, maps.sspinnovations.com, referenced here from my ArcGIS server. It's available to both locations. So we are using an edit proxy here. And that same proxy is also used here. So we've done that at some pretty low level network sniffing level, so we're pretty confident in all of these components. And when exposed this way, it works flawlessly. Key points to take home though, the data is only ever stored in your back office geodatabase, keeping it secure behind your firewall. We are exposing only via secured and encrypted channels out to the internet. And we've got a box in the DMZ that's brokering that data from the back office to the internet. Everything here is secured via username, password, Everything here is secured by, via your ArcGIS Online data store for authentication and authorization. The summation of all this is that the data is now accessible via collector, ArcGIS for iOS, ArcGIS Explorer, maybe a custom application that exists uh, on your public website even. A public outage map is an example. So to sum this up, we're keeping the data secure while enabling your back office investment that you already have today to be consumed fully by Esri's new platform. And that's going to bring home success. Thanks.